One of the approaches to understanding the origin of the universe involves brain theory. This reaches into the toolkit of multidimensional space-times. String theory, in fact, invokes seven, eight, nine, or even ten-dimensional space-time to understand the fundamental nature of matter. And similar theories are being used to try and explain the universe itself. In the theory, time loses its meaning. We have a sense of the age of our universe, and the clock stops there. In fact, in the Planck era, time has no meaning, so neither space and time are definable at the genesis event of our universe. In this backdrop theory for the multiverse, time also has no meaning. Time may be an emergent property in some of the universes that develop, but it may not exist in many of them, and it's not necessary for the overall construct. Brian, I'm about to show you something that's gonna blow your mind. Do you know what the Big Bang Theory is? Yeah, the theory that the universe started with a massive outward explosion from a singularity of infinite mass and infinite density. Check out the big brain on Brian. Good. Now take a look. The universe's cosmic background radiation, a, a kind of echo of the Big Bang, precisely matches the energy spectrum of my return pad. What does that mean? It means my return pad's explosion was the Big Bang. But the Big Bang happened like billions of years ago. No, no. We were outside the space-time continuum. Time and space didn't exist until my explosion. Which means I created the universe, Brian. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. You were born in the universe. How could you create it? It's called a temporal causality loop. The universe created me so I could create it so it could create me and so on. That's... that's the most incredible thing I've ever heard. So wait, that, that means that I kind of created the universe too. Uh, no, 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 no. You're, you're, you're sort of the Art Garfunkel of the universe. You can see here that we've ventured far beyond the Big Bang model and are addressing the question of where the universe came from, why there was a Big Bang in the first place, and whether that's all there really is. Difficult as it is, theorists have started to work with these models, these eternal universes, where our universe, the Big Bang and everything that follows, is just one set of events in a backdrop of many events, many possible universes. One of the most fruitful of these is called the ekpyrotic model. Ekpyrotic is from the Greek root of a word meaning endless fire. In this model, multidimensional spacetimes involving higher dimensional worlds lead to the creation of our three-dimensional space and one dimension of time. Essentially, our universe develops from the energy released when higher order spacetimes or brains collide. That collision creates the motive force for the Big Bang and the subsequent expansion of our universe and the creation of all matter from pure energy early in the universe. Tension between the brains leads to them re-collapsing on a time scale of about a trillion years. So this is actually an oscillating universe model. Brains operating in these higher dimensions can cause other collisions, the creation of other universes with different properties than our universe. The people working with this theory are using fiendishly difficult mathematics to describe cosmology. Their first job is, of course, to reproduce conventional cosmology and the Big Bang theory using the more difficult mathematical context of brain theory. But that's hard to do, and they haven't got there yet. If they do get there, then they'll be able to explore the other possibilities of the theory. This is young and very speculative theoretical science. It's almost impossible to visualize higher dimension space-times, but if we drop the number of dimensions and project them, we can visualize what the cyclic universe based on the ekpyrotic theory might look like. At this point, we reach the bleeding edge of cosmology. Many of these ideas may be incorrect, but the cosmologists who are working on them are excited to be able to venture in a new regime. And since I'm going beyond my pay grade, I need some expert help in explaining this. So much to talk. I haven't. I haven't spoken to you in a little while. Yeah. What have you? What have you uh, been doing with yourself lately? I know. We'll get to the movie in a second. But just, I'm talking about you, the man. What are you doing? A lot of things. I've been doing a lot of reading actually lately. Reading. Yeah. 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 Like what? What? Uh, what kind of? What well, kind of stuff are you reading? Mostly road signs. Uh, <laughs> prescriptions. Make sure I take them right. <laughs> right. Right. So, one time I, a good idea. I, yeah, I took a whole bottle of uh, what's that called Vicodin? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it just it looked yummy, <laughs> you know. Uh huh. And uh, that's not I, a good idea. Yeah. After I plowed my bulldozer into a store, I, I woke up in the hospital and uh -huh. I just thought, you know, I got to start reading more. Reading more. Yeah. Now, uh, seriously, I'm just curious. And I think a lot of us are. What, what do you seriously like to read? Like just I'm like in the book world. Fascinated with science. Really? I'm fascinated with science. It's incredible. Have you heard about the new brain theory? 
The, uh, uh, it, who's, whose brain theory is this? It's, it's, it's Stephen, Stephen Hawking has been... Uh, Stephen Hawking? Yeah, talking about this new brain theory about the universe and uh, opposed to the Big Bang theory. And they're, they're coming out with some new concepts. It's really exciting. And you actually the read erotic uh, universe. Have you heard about this? The Ip, say it again. Ip Ip it's very difficult to say. <laughs> the Ip Kirotic universe. Wow, that's amazing yeah. that you're reading that well, stuff. Well, the, the model we have now, Conan, is based on the idea that our Big Bang universe was created from the collision of two three-dimensional worlds moving along a hidden extra dimension. But conceptually, the Icarotic model is very different. There is no inflation or rapid change happening at all. The approach to collision takes place very slowly over an exceedingly long period of time. It's quite fascinating that the rapid change and very slow change can produce nearly the same effects. The difference results in one distinctive observational prediction, though. The inflationary cosmology predicts a spectrum of gravitational waves that may be detectable in the cosmic microwave background. The Ikpirotic model, however, predicts no gravitational waves effects should be observable in the cosmic microwave background. And I'm just so relieved by this because I've been... No, really. That's incredible. I, I've, so, I've been I've, trying and trying to tell this to people for years. Really? You know, I've been uh, trying to drill it through their heads, but they don't listen to me, you know? They called me mad. <laughs> they laughed at me. Excuse me, Connor. Hold on. Hello. Hello, Tim. This is. Oh, hi, Stephen Hawking. I can't believe wow, this. Wow, that's amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, 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 I so just wanted to call you to tell now. you how happy I am that you're excited about the new electronic universe theory. It's amazing. But don't bother trying to explain it to them. Their key bridge cannot grasp the idea of the world on the bridge. Yeah, I know. Well, it's been so frustrating for me because uh, the moment I wrote it, uh, read, read it, I, I knew it was important and I wanted to tell them. But, you know, what can you do? Well, I had to go now. Okay. I'm very busy watching Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I hope I have a few feelings to take. <laughs> You truly are a genius. No, you're a genius. No, you are. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> no, you are. No, you are to infinity. <laughs> you got me there, Steve. That was insane. That was uh, incredible. Now, theorists are working with multidimensional space times, with brain theory, to try and understand the Big Bang, the reason for the origin of the universe. Such theories have to start by explaining things that the conventional Big Bang theory already explains. Brain theory attempts to explain the reason the universe exists in terms of multidimensional space-time, the same kind of mathematical theories that are used in string theory. It's very speculative. One variation of this theory, the ekpyrotic theory, also finesses the Big Bang itself and postulates an endless continuing universe with expansion and contraction of higher dimensional spaces. It's worth remembering that such theories are very speculative, 